Good afternoon. StreamYard tells me I'm live. So hopefully everyone can hear me all right. I can turn the volume up a bit if I'm very low. Um, but welcome. It's quarter to six in the early evening for me here in the UK. So um, good afternoon for those of you on the east coast of America. Good morning for those on the west coast. Um, this really is a worldwide case. So, um, in about 15 minutes, there is going to be a press conference um, with Gabby Petito's parents. I'm still yet to find out where it's streaming, honestly. <laughs> um, I'm assuming WFLA will be streaming it. So, I've got the WFLA channel up behind the scenes. Um, but... Uh, if they don't go live pretty soon, I'm going to have to kind of scrabble about to find out exactly where it is streaming. Um, I'm sure that some of the kind of the, the mainstream outlets will be will be streaming it. So um, and I know there's a lot of other true crime channels streaming as well. So um, it makes me giggle a little bit when when we all go live. And uh, we're all streaming, you know, like a, a news channel. They could shut us down. They could, they could get rid of every single true crime channel by copyright striking. I'm sure they could if they, if they had a mind to. Um, but uh, everyone else seems to stream uh, news channels. Uh, so, you know, um, it seems fine. Anyway, um, somebody tells me that News Nation is going to stream it. News Nation, News Nation. All right, we'll try News Nation. I, I was on WFLA earlier on, and they said they were going to stream it, and they do seem reliable. I've been, I've been following those um, uh, that channel all week, and they are pretty reliable. All right, let me go, let me get News Nation. Uh, News Nation live. Let's have a see what they're doing. Oh, I don't think that's the right News Nation. News Nation now, I think it is, isn't it? Um, nothing's live as of yet. Oh, something's live. Oh no, that's just a trailer. Well, I'm sure I'm sure that at least one of the these channels will go live, but uh, we can just keep our eyes on it. Uh, yeah, JB, JB from um, WFLA news conference on WFLA eight. That's what I've got on behind the scenes um, news conference on WFLA out of Tampa, Florida. Yeah, that's the one uh, news channel eight that I've been following all week. So uh, we'll go for that. And then if they don't go live in the next few minutes, we can, uh, we can panic. We can panic. Okay, so while we're waiting, let's just do a quick update on what's been going on in the last 24 hours. I tried to do something quite comprehensive and, and short this morning um, because uh, I just wanted to get myself updated to be honest oh yeah here we go wfla has just gone live um gabby petito's family speaks in new york okay I'll, I think they don't. I'll keep that on behind the scenes if there's anything good that comes up um i can always pop it on beforehand so um yeah just a quick quick update um if you didn't see the video i did this morning so it was it was very exciting, <laughs> kind of. Um, I'm sure you're aware. Dog the bounty hunter, um, a couple of days ago now, went and uh, knocked on the the, the um, laundry home. Didn't get an answer. Um, Mrs. Laundry called nine one one. Quite ironic. Um, she called nine one one, and dog left, but. Dog has been working his little socks off and there's been lots of tips coming into his tip line. And I believe it's one of those tips that Dog is following. And the 
um, there's a campground called Fort Fort de Soto Campground. It's just over an hour away from the laundry home. And um, it appears that the laundry family have been there twice in the last two weeks. According to, and this is this is all alleged, this, but this is directly from uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter via a tipster, that um, Mr. and Mrs. And, oh, oh, yeah, and apparently there is, there is footage. We haven't seen the footage, but there's footage of the laundry, um, the pickup truck. The, um, they have to kind of check in, you know, and check out. So they were there. This is provable that they were there. Um, so, yeah, I know, I, I know WFLA is live now. I know I've got it on. I've got it on behind the scenes. I'm going to put it on in a sec and, and we can listen in and wait for the conference. Um, so they were there from the 1st of September till the 3rd of September and then from the 6th of September till the 8th of September. Allegedly, two people arrived. This was on the... 6th of September, so the last trip they did, three people arrived, but only two people left. So make of that what you will. So the the excitement now, like all the news crews are there, um, Brian Entin has been there this afternoon. I'll, uh, I'll just very quickly share my screen and show you what Brian Entin's been up to. Brian Entin has been an absolute champ, uh, literally camping outside of the laundry's home but he's there right now hopefully everybody can see that yeah you can he's there right now this is brian entin on twitter this is the d's i can't say it d soto campground and now we're away from northport um so this is where the search is now concentrating. Now, of course, it could be, it could absolutely be that this is another red herring. That this is this is some kind of ruse similar to what it looks like. You know, they've spent close on probably like hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars at least. I've heard over a million dollars being spent on that search around the swamp. Um, all those, that 25,000 acre swamp land that they've been searching for God knows how long now. Um, and yesterday they scaled back. So that's kind of interesting. It's an interesting timeline as whether, you know, the FBI had got wind of, because surely the FBI have had the same tips that Dog the Bounty Hunters had. Surely, um, you would think so, um, but they've not done very well so far, haven't they? I mean, Northport Police have completely dropped the ball, like Northport Police Department, but you'd think the FBI would uh, have a little bit more kind of uh, go about them. So let's put um, HFLA on and listen in, and then... Um, once the press conference is finished, then I'll do I'll do kind of a quick Q and A. If anybody wants to ask me any questions about the case or about uh, about Summer Wells, even um, or my opinions on on these these things, so I'm, I'm happy to answer questions um, afterwards. Yeah, Kimmy, I can't believe the FBI are that stupid. Well, well, I wouldn't have thought that the FBI are stupid, but. I don't know. I, I guess some people are more willing to they're more willing to maybe send a tip in to somebody like Dog the Bounty Hunter than the FBI. I, I don't know. I don't really know. I have kind of got a bit of a a bit of an uneasy feeling about it, if I'm honest, because I kind of think it's just another ruse. I don't know. I, I don't know. Because all this has kind of, you know, just just happened in the last few hours. Anyway, let's um, let's get. Uh, I'll have to take that off. Stop share and then reshare. Okay. Uh, 
There we go. Actually, I'll do it another way. I'll do it another way. I'll do it. I'll do it a better way than that. I'll share the tab, and then I can watch with you. Then, and I can I can see the chat at the same time. Throw those flowers in the trash. Any more deliveries or drop-offs pertaining to flowers or otherwise, you can note here before we let you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there have been, been actually, actually this morning. morning. I was in my vehicle, but my photographer here, Justin, he saw when UPS actually pulled up with a flower delivery. Um, that did happen just within the last two hours or so. so and also, oh, it's oh, hilarious, oh, isn't it? How oh, this, yeah, this is Amazon breaking news. Right. I mean, I, there's an I'll Amazon delivery uh, right here, but right behind this Amazon vehicle, it's like, it's just. Uh, I'll just uh, mute that for a sec. It's hilarious. I mean, I made a YouTube shot this afternoon of uh, <laughs> Brian's parents leaving there. Oh, and they arrived back like not long later. They looked like they'd been to like a shop or something or to, I don't know, send some money to Brian. Who knows? Who knows? I just hope that the police are keeping a, keeping a really close eye on them because they've been, they've been very dodgy so far. You know, although they've, they've played by the letter of the law, they haven't actually at the moment, as we know, committed a crime. Which is bizarre, but apparently, you know, um, I don't know. Anyway, let's listen in and then uh, I'll be back soon to have a chat. I'm Gabby Petito's family here momentarily. If you're just joining us here, folks, WFLA Now is JB Buno. Masa Saidi eight on your side, investigator Justin Shecker here with us live. And you guys, uh, I'll bring you guys up here. Um, We'll keep this here in the center of your screen. So if there's any activity here at the podium, but Masa, we'll start with you here. An emotional day, I'm sure, for Gabby Petito's family, just two days after uh, the funeral for Gabby Petito. Yeah, that's Can right. everybody the hear this okay, that by that the way? We're not going to uh, make any statements after that horrific discovery. Let me know if I need to turn the volume up. Her body up. being uh, found and confirmed. And uh, this is going to be the first time that we hear from the family after the funeral and uh I imagine they're going to be trying to get this back out on the news. I mean, it's so covered in the news already, but trying to uh, increase the manhunt, increase the attention. We had that really signif potentially significant uh, lead come out about the possibility of Brian Laundrie being in Fort DeSoto Park, about 75 miles away from the Laundrie family home. And we know the... Uh, huge role that the public has played in this case uh, with the YouTubers, Justin, you know this, and helping to uh, possibly locate where Gabby Petito was ultimately found in Wyoming. And now that this information is out there, we obviously still need to vet it. We need to hear from officials. This is just coming from Dog the Bounty Hunter, but he does seem to, you know, have some sort of proof that the Laundry family was at Fort DeSoto uh, on two occasions in early September, now that that information is out there, uh, people that were at Fort DeSoto Park, we might start hearing from them. So a lot of developments today. Justin? We did see on Sunday at that emotional memorial service, uh, JB and Moss, we did hear from both of Gabby's fathers, uh, Joseph Petito and Jim Schmidt. Um, I got two quotes written down from that uh, beautiful celebration of her life. Uh, one was the quote from one of her favorite songs, guys, and that was when Jim Schmidt quoted Let It Be, and he said, and when the brokenhearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. Of course, you know, that is the song lyric that was tattooed on her arm. A second quote from her father, Joseph Petito, I'm going to read if I can read my chicken scratch heron here, but a very poignant quote. If there's a trip you want to take, take it now. Do it while you've got the time. If there's a relationship that might not be the best for you, Leave it now. So it's just two moments that stuck out to me from the memorial service, two powerful quotes, one quoting, let it be. And that second quote coming from her father, Joseph Petito. It was two weeks ago when this story was just taking off. I had the chance to speak with her father and to think from there to now, as her father said, now the whole world knows her name. Everyone yep. knows who this young woman is, knows the story, knows her dreams, her aspirations, and sadly, this tragedy that has captivated the nation. We we were just given, I just want to, sorry to interrupt there, Justin, that was Richard B. Stafford, the Petito 
family and Schmidt family attorney there, and he just gave a one-minute warning here. So, Justin, allow me just to kind of explain how this is going to work here for our audience as we wait for Richard Stafford and uh, members of Gabby Petito's family here to file in. Uh, we're going to hear, we're going to listen in to the press conference here uh, from New York, listen in as the entire really country will be listening in here, and then immediately afterwards, you can stay right here on this live stream, whether or not you're watching on WFLA.com, our app, on Facebook or on, on YouTube, wherever you're watching from, we are then going to continue the conversation here, what we've learned in this press conference. Uh, again, a lot of questions and comments about the search efforts underway here in the Tampa Bay area. So don't go anywhere. As soon as the press conference here is done, we'll continue the conversation and let you know what the latest is as far as the cause that is so loud and vibrant online, the justice, hashtag justice for Gabby cause here. So uh, let's kind of listen in here for a moment. Uh, this is, again, a one o'clock press conference that is about to get underway here live from New York. And we're anticipating hearing from members of Gabby Petito's uh, family here. Uh, Justin uh, Massa, I would imagine I'll, I'll, we'll kind of keep this up here full screen here for you folks. But um, I would imagine this is going to be an emotional press conference here for uh, Gabby Petito's family, Nicole Schmidt, uh, uh, Jim Schmidt, whoever's going to be speaking here. Yeah, I got emotional just listening to Justin, you know, talk about that song and talk about, you know, how her family wants her life to be remembered, not just her death. It's going to be very interesting to hear what they have to say, Justin. And we know her father, Joseph Petito, has announced on Twitter the formation of a, a Gabby Petito Foundation looking to help other families that sadly might end up in a, in a similar situation as this. And we know just her case alone has just brought back so much attention to these other missing person cases yeah. across the country. Uh, but this one really has captivated the country, guys, and just eager to see what the uh, family attorney and her parents have to say and there comes uh, Mr. Stafford. All right, here and comes parents. the family. Yeah, oh, wow. Uh, a lot of members of the family. There's Richard Stafford, the attorney here. There's Nicole Schmidt. There's Jim Smith, Joe Petito, other members of the family here. Let's listen in live, and then we'll continue to talk here with you live on WFLA Now after the press conference concludes. Good afternoon. From the moment Nicole called to report that Gabby was missing, the worst fears of any parent played out before our, our eyes. That nightmare became a reality when the Grand Teton search and rescue team located their beautiful daughter. During that time, they had an outpouring of love and affection and sympathy from not just their family and friends, but from the law enforcement community, the press, and from people around the world. And for that, they thank you. They've been given the time and the space to grieve this awful loss. And we ask that you continue to respect their privacy and give them the space and time to go through this difficult process. Gabby Petito was a beautiful woman. Her infectious smile and love of life made people gravitate to her. Gabby Petito loved life, loved people, and loved experiences. She was the bright light in everyone's life that knew her. Gabby's family does not want that light to dim, and they want to make some good from this awful tragedy. That's why they're starting the Gabby Petito Foundation. I'm joined today with Joe and Tara Petito, with Jim and Nicole Schmidt, and close friend Gary Ryder. They're going to make some statements, and after that, we're going to take some questions. Next. No? I just wanted to uh, say thank you to everybody that we encountered out west in Wyoming all of the law enforcement agencies out there and across the country um, for doing an amazing job with uh, locating Gabby. Especially want to thank the uh, Teton County Search and Rescue Team, who is an uh, all-volunteer agency that come together. They are highly trained, and uh, they were a part of that mission to find Gabby, and they did an unbelievable job. Uh, we're so grateful for everybody out there. Uh, they were they were second to none. They were unbelievable, and we are forever grateful for that. And everybody back home who uh, helped us as well. It was 
was amazing that we were able to get her. And we're just happy to have her. Thank you. Um, I'd actually like to thank all you guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the media, press, especially the people that are behind the camera. All right, they don't get enough credit for what it is that they do. And uh, so I do appreciate all them. Uh, social media has been amazing. Um, so I just like to thank everyone, you know, for that. I, I do. It is greatly appreciated. That was very helpful in bringing our daughter home. So thank you very much. I don't think we can thank everybody enough. Um, I really want to thank the Aware Foundation and We Help the Missing for putting her poster out there. It reached over two million people within 48 hours all over the world yeah. and I especially want to thank Detective Tracy Barry of the 5th Precinct here in Patchogue because without her um, we don't know when this would have even happened she, she got the ball rolling she, she's my angel and I um, thank her the most thank you at this time we'll be taking questions Dr. Burns NBC News the hashtag Justice for Gabby has been trending. You mentioned how much social media has been helpful in locating her and in this investigation. What does Justice for Gabby look like from here, Ed? Can we answer that? Yeah. Justice for Gabby is that we see justice for her homicide. The FBI has classified her death a homicide. They are the premier agency in the country. They're investigating her death, and we believe through their investigation, we will have justice for Gabby. Rick. Yes. Uh, we haven't heard from the Laundry family. We haven't been able to hear much from the FBI. They can't share a lot with us about Brian's whereabouts. Is there anything that you can tell us about the efforts to find him, what the family thinks about where he might be, and the Laundry family silence? Again, um, for the Laundry silence, the laundries did not help us find Gabby. They're sure is not going to help us find Brian. For Brian, we're asking you to turn yourself in to the FBI or the nearest law enforcement agency. Um, for yesterday, the laundry family released a statement saying that um, Mr. and Mrs. Laundry have no, are not helping Brian um, get away and hide. Do you believe? Do you believe? Them? Uh, that's for the FBI to investigate. I believe um, that they're the preeminent law enforcement organization in this country, and I know they're investigating all avenues of this case. Rich, can you, Trevor, I'll from uh, ABC. Yes. You touched on trusting the FBI here. Does it bother the family at all that Brian Laundry is still not named as a suspect in Gabby's disappearance? The parents are 100% happy with the FBI. They've been with us at every single step of the way, and we know that they will bring justice for Gabby. The Foundation for Gabby. Yes. Jones from CNN. Can you or the family talk at all about uh, or describe what kind of contact you've had with the Laundry family since early September? And what your previous relationship was like with that family while Gabby and Brian Laundry were doing any sort of insight into that? We're not going to talk about the relationship between the Petito, the Schmidt, and the Laundry family. Um, the Petito and Schmidt family have spoken with the FBI and they requested that we don't discuss any relationship between Gabby, between um uh, we're just hoping that uh, through our tragedy uh, with losing Gabby that in the future that uh some good can come out of it, that we can help other people that may be in a similar situation, reach out to these other organizations that do similar things and find out what's missing. You know, what can we do to, to fill that void? What can we do to help people? Uh, just from uh, the, Aware, uh, the Aware Foundation alone and reaching 2 million people, they told us that other law enforcement agencies are now starting to look back at other missing persons cases and starting to uh, reinvestigate them and, and look into them. And we're just hopeful that it's, we're able to help people in the future, you know, just try to get through with something similar. In the vein of not letting pro-life go, Jim, I noticed um, mom and dad have some new tattoos that resemble 
Tad of Gabby. Would you be willing to tell us about that? Yeah, these were tattoos that Gabby designed herself. She was an artist and um, I wanted to have her with me all the time. So, so we all I feel it. This helps. We all put them. We all you all show us. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants it's all right, we do. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Believe. Let it be. Believe. 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 Yeah, sure. And you said Gabby drew this one. Yeah. Listen, here, here's here's the end. All right. We need we need positive stuff to come from the tragedy that happened. All right. We can't let her name be taken in vain. We need we need positive stuff. All right. So. Anything that we can do to bring that up and, and, and help people, that's what we want to do. Joe, do you think Ryan's going to rely on I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, yeah. Is it yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. to say from you? Is it just about the community coming together? I mean, we've been at the memorial almost every day, and you have people coming from all over Long Island, from Montauk to the West End, because they all say they felt such a connection to Gabby. Like somebody said, she, she reminds him of her son, and things like that. What does that mean to you, this, this, this Jesus? drawn emotion from so many people over the country. I mean, I'm sure, and your Blue Point community, the, the candles being lit. Can you just step up and possibly respond to that outpouring and what it's meant to you? Um, I don't know how to respond to that. I just hope that um, people are inspired by her. Um, it, it's hard to put into words, but it, it means a lot to me that she's touched so many lives already, and it, it's just only two weeks into it. and. Um, I'm so proud of her for doing this, and we're going to keep it going. Like you said, keep the light going and help a lot of people if we can. And will the foundation right. just be for missing children or missing adults as well? I, I think you said children, but I didn't know. We're still that. working out. You know, this is, again, this has only been a, a few days, so we're still working that out. We want to help in any way we can. I just want to add to the last uh, question that we've received letters emails, um, cards from all over the world, from Australia, from Europe. We had uh, people from Italy. We had people at the funeral that came from as far away as Texas, as Florida, as California. So people from all over the country have called and sent their uh, well wishes. Can you yes. confirm that the fraudulent activity um, with Brian's being charged with, was that Gabby's car that he was using? That's something you're gonna to have to talk to the FBI about that I know that they have um, unsealed an indictment. So I believe they would be the best agency to deal with that. And just a question for Joe. Joe, you mentioned social media. Can you tell me, do you feel obviously that the outpouring of people all across the world with tips coming in that social media helped find Gabby? And how do you feel knowing that she was someone who wanted in social media, the video she made, everything else. I don't want to dismiss the ridiculously hard work that the FBI and law enforcement mm -hmm. all around did, but social media has been amazing and very influential. And to be honest, it should continue for other people too. This same, this same type of um, heightened awareness should be continued for everyone, everyone. And that goes for you all too. Joe, your words at the memorial service uh, were very touching to many people. And I'm wondering if you've heard from people who heard your words about being inspired by Gabby's life and also leaving bad relationships. Uh, yeah, you know, why don't you do that? Again, we've received messages from um, individuals on many issues since we started the foundation and um, those, there are some that were really personal, and at this point, we're not going to get into that. Has the family spoken with Jen Bethune, the woman who took the video of the van? We've spoken with uh, numerous people that uh, gave gave tips to the FBI and to us. So they have um, spoken with Jen Bethune? I believe they have. Okay. What do you make of people like Dog the Bounty Hunter and John Walsh, get, Walsh getting involved in looking for crime laundry? Uh, again, um, we just like we ask for help to look from everyone that if they see Brian Laundry or uh, any information on that, we're asking that they call the, law the local law enforcement or the FBI. We welcome everybody's help to find him. And, and if you have any information, we're asking that you call the FBI tip line or your local police department. So we'll take help from everybody. What's the plans for, um, for 
So, <clears throat> part of part of our goal was we wanted to bring her home as home as quickly as possible. Uh, but it's important for the uh, FBI, the Teton County Sheriff's, the uh, Teton County uh, Coroner's Office uh, to hold on to her uh, for as long as they need. We want to make sure that no matter what, uh, we do not impede their investigation in any way. We wanted her home immediately, but we understand their position and uh, we know that she's safe with them and as long as she's with them. And uh, it was a very tough decision to have to make to, to come home, but we felt it was important to come home so we could mourn her and uh, celebrate her life and be with our family and friends. And when they're ready to release her, we will be bringing her home. Have you gotten any of her things back from Florida? Not yet. Jim and Joe, you guys made a plea to the world, um, the country, the world, to help lead you to Gabby and help you find Gabby. Do you have a similar plea for the world to help you find Ron? I want to help. I want to ask everyone to help all of the people that are missing and need help. And like I said before, it's on all of you, everyone that's in this room, to do that. <clears throat> and, and if you don't do that for other people that are missing, that's a shame. Because <clears throat> it's not just Gabby that deserves that. So look to yourselves on why not that's not being, that's not being done. And with, and with Brian, <clears throat> that's, our, our focus is still on uh, mourning Gabby and honoring Gabby. The FBI is doing everything they can. And we have our full faith in them. So. Can you, can you say anything about what your understanding is of what was going on between September 1st and September 11th? Is this something you need to talk about? No. No, we're not going to comment on that. That's part of the investigation at this point. Can I understand? Shot of the four parents again yep. um, with your tattoos just all together. Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe. That's all right. In front of the mics, there's a lot of wires. I know. Just, <laughs> you guys <laughs> make yoga. <laughs> when did you have these done? We all had them done last time. Oh, wow. We all did it together. Like we said, we've always co-parented Gabby together, and that's not going to stop now. We're going to do it. We're in this together. And did three of them say let it be, and then mom said no. Mom has, mom has let it be as well. No, I'm sorry, is that Gabby's handwriting? Is it was three of those flowers? Or is it just this? This is the way she had it written. That's the way she had it on her arm. Yeah. So we all did it. Oh, going right? Yeah. Yeah, the one on your arm. And did you always have that on the phone? Gabby had that phone. Yeah. Did you have it? Yeah. I got that last night, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh,
we go through our bouts. It's, it's an emotional roller coaster. It's there's ups and downs. Um, days that were full of pain and grief. Um, sometimes angry, but you stop. You take a breath. You remember Gabby and all the great times we had with her. All the good memories and all the good things we want to do in her name in the future. And that's what that's what picks you up. That's what carries you through. And hopefully will keep us going from, from here on out. And then what kind of signs has she been giving you? Can you step up a little bit? Thanks. Wait, we, we actually got behind a car yesterday and there was um, a Wyoming sticker and the, the letters were GBZ. Gabs. So Gabs. <laughs> She's with us. She's with us. She's with us. All right. She's with I us. Think, I think we're good. The signs, you, the signs are there. You just have to look for them. Thank, thank you, all. you all so much. Appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We don't stop remembering Gabby. That's the message, the focus for Gabby Petito's family showing tremendous strength here at a press conference in New York. They've created the Gabby Petito Foundation while mourning their daughter here in New York and collectively now calling for justice for Gabby as the FBI continues their homicide investigation. Let's bring in our entire team here, folks. Eight on your sides, Masa Saidi. WFLA News Channel 8's Justin Shecker here with us, Masa. I know it's been it's been emotional here, yeah. and let's just let, let's first and foremost we're going to take some of your hashtag AJB, hashtag AMasa, hashtag a Justin comments here. Let's just for a moment here, folks. Let's um let's just kind of take off our our reporter hat just for a second here, and let's just comment all of us as human beings. Uh, the strength that we had here, the unbelievable strength by this family. Uh, it's unbelievably touching. I think it radiates and and, and or it just it, it spreads through the world. I think um, just how strong and brave and courageous these are. Uh, this family is. Masa, what do you what do you think? Um, very moved by the tattoos. Very moved by it. The family, all of them, last night getting let it be. It was a tattoo that Gabby had. Uh, very emotional to me. Very beautiful way to remember her. Justin, just this whole idea of we see this. JB, where people try to turn tragedy into something positive. You heard from Joseph Petito calling out all the media in the room there in the New York media market networks all there that you need to give the same level of attention to other families that go through these similar nightmares where their, their children go missing. Uh, we did hear a lot about this foundation to try to uh, keep her bright light alive and how this family will remain committed to celebrating the life of their daughter, but also trying to help other families that sadly end up in similar situations. We, uh, everybody bear with me here. I'm going to, um, we are trying to reconnect with some of our audience here where we lost signal. So I'll continue. Why don't you guys continue just to break down here what you, what we've learned here in this press conference? Well, I will tell you, you know, what we didn't really learn anything more about the family was very careful, obviously on the advice of their attorney to not release any information at all about, you know, the criminal investigation. Reporters had all sorts of questions. You know, do you have any idea what was happening from September 1st to September 11th? They declined to answer that question. Uh, reporters asked, are you upset that Brian Laundry is just named a person of interest that he's not named uh, a, a suspect. suspect. And the family I'll just, said uh, they were very I'll just turn that down a bit so I with can with the FBI. Uh, I can we also learned that Gabby Petito's um, actually, remains I'll, are still in Teton County. And I'll just, uh, Gabby I'll just mute it for a, said, a few minutes uh, while I while I have a chat. Um, I, uh, I think that family is absolutely amazing. Um, the fact that. They are a blended family. They've just all come together. I mean, perhaps they were close anyway, but such a, a message of hope amongst a, a massive, massive tragedy. And and I really hope, uh, Maria Michelle, I'm sorry, you're gone. I'm, uh, I'm fed up of you. Sorry, you're gone. Um. It's just, it's just so incredibly tragic, tragic, and and I'm really pleased that they're putting their their grief and their energy and they're turning it, they're turning it on its head and doing something really positive in setting up um, a foundation that hopefully will help lots of families in the future who are in their situation. And um, 
and I have a massive amount of respect for them. And absolutely, Evil Ducky, great name, <laughs> great name. Um, it's such a stark contrast to the Wells family. And, and that's it. That's what a grieving family looks like. Unfortunately, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of grieving families whose children, whose family members have been taken away far, far, far too soon, whether it's through homicide, whether it's through another another of life's tragedies that nobody has any control over you know it's um it it there's so many and I, and I'm really pleased what Gabby's dad said about social media in that you know we we get in social media YouTube creators you know we get we get a hound in sometimes for getting involved in true crime you know, like, you know, you're trying to be a detective and, and this, that, the other. It's like, no, we're not trying to be detectives. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to be a detective. I'm trying to spread awareness. One of the things that I wanted to do when I started this channel, yeah, I love true crime. I, I love that kind of, you know, investigating a case. I love that. But I'm not, I'm under no illusion. I'm not going to solve a case by myself. But the awareness, you know, the awareness of putting Gabby's name out there, putting Summer Wells' name out there. I mean, who else, had it not been for social media, who else would have really, who else would, would know about Summer Wells if it hadn't have been for social media really taking taking it on and and really keeping keeping Summer's name out there? And I've been watching the chat, and, and I know there's been some negativity. The vast majority of people have been really, really, really respectful and... You know, there's been a couple of people that I've had to time out. There's somebody I've blocked, but in the main, it's been it's been really respectful, and I can understand when people not 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 negative about false flags and this that the other. I don't want to hear any of that on my channel. I don't want to hear it. I, I don't care what you think about false flags. Just take it somewhere else. But when people say, "Well, why this case? Why not?" any other case and and sometimes a, a race argument comes into it and I, I get that I understand that you know why do some cases really you know hit hit the media and others don't and and I think a lot of that is a social media presence or there's something about certain cases that that, that just grabs people's interest but as Joseph Petito said, you know, really, we want this for all cases. We want this for many, many more cases and and try to do the best we can for, you know, for for everybody who's out there, who's missing, who's lost. And and yeah, and I think social media is the perfect platform for it. Honestly, there's dog. There's dog. <laughs> Oh dear. I said in a video uh, a couple of days ago now that Dog the Bounty Hunter is like Marmite. He's like yeast extract. You either love him or you hate him. And um and uh I was pretty neutral, but he's uh he's he's definitely growing on me. But um before I end this stream. Um, it looks like they're talking about the. Um, this is the. This is the um, De uh, Fort De Soto. Um, I'm waving my cursor around, and you can't see my cursor, can you? But <laughs> um, this is the campsite where Dog the Bounty Hunter got the tip, and it looks nice. It looks. It looks really nice. Have a look at it on the. Uh, on Google Maps, it's a nice place to go and hide out. It looks a lot more comfortable than a swamp, um, to be honest. But uh, as I said before the press conference, I, I'm i wondering whether this is another ruse, whether he, he, he might have been there, he might have been there, but is he still there? And, and it certainly doesn't look like the kind of place where you can hide forever. So, um, so yeah. There's that. Has anybody got any questions before I end this stream? Next stop, Cuba. Yeah. 
Um, I wondered about Cuba because it's not very far away, is it? Is it something like it's less than a hundred miles, isn't it, from from the tip of Florida to Cuba? Um, I wondered whether he'd uh, he'd find his way to Cuba. I certainly don't think he's in Canada. I know that there's been a lot of talk about him going to Canada. I think he'd be a bit a bit crazy to go to Canada, to be honest. Because he'd, he'd just get extradited. You know, if he's going to leave the country, he'd need to do it. He'd need to do it illegally. Certainly would now. I mean, he could have got out the country before he was um, 90 miles, people are saying. Um he could certainly have got out of the country perfectly legally before uh, before that arrest warrant was um, was issued. But um, but yeah, he won't last long in Cuba. Well, you know, hopefully he won't last long anywhere. Hopefully he'll be. Um, hopefully he will be apprehended alive, alive. Um, I don't know. I know it was on lockdown. It was on lockdown. I don't know whether they've relaxed that a little bit. Um, I don't know. Mexico is another place you might go. Alberta's in lockdown. Okay. But is the, is the border in, you know, I know they weren't letting people over the border, weren't they? Um, but... It'd be, it'd be great. I don't think he'd go to Canada. I, I really don't think he'd go to Canada. Honestly, if if you want to ask me my opinion, I think he's in Florida. I don't think he'll go very far away from his parents. I really don't. I really, really don't think he'll go very far. I think they've helped him so far. This is just my opinion. This is just my opinion. Bahamas, yeah, a curious rose. The Bahamas, yeah. Well, there's a nice place to go and uh, go and uh, hide out. The Bahamas. You could get you could get worse than the Bahamas. Um, what was this? A local country star. A local country star from Tennessee has joined Summer's Army a few hours ago. Oh, really? Oh, that's good. That's good. Border's still on lockdown. Okay, so he's not gone to Canada unless he snuck over the border. He's not in Canada. He's not. Let's let's. I'm sure he's not. Um. Yeah, if he doesn't speak, if he doesn't speak Spanish, then he might not. He might not do well in Mexico. He might speak Spanish though. He might speak Spanish. We don't know. But I, I really don't think. I really don't think he's far away from his parents. I think that they're, they're, they've defended him um, it, with their silence. I think they've they've been as shady as anything, and and they're certainly not missing him, are they? It's not like he's genuinely missing, and they're fearing for his safety. That's absolute nonsense. They don't look they don't look like grieving parents to me. They don't look like somebody whose son is missing to me, who's, you know, they, they feel that he's going to harm himself. That's a complete and total lie, an absolute lie, in my humble opinion. <laughs> Spanish is picked up quick. I know, I know a few words of um, Italian. I don't know any Spanish, though, but I've never, I've ne I've never been to Spain, actually. Um. Have we got any questions? Let's have a look. Uh, most areas speak some English in Mexico. Oh. Yeah, but to really blend in, I think being being a, a, a fluent Spanish speaker might be helpful. Now, I, I honestly don't think he's. I don't think he's even. Let alone left the country. I'd be. I'd be very, very, very surprised if he's left the state. And if he's not at this campground that's on the screen now, I I would imagine that he's somewhere equally, equally nice to hang out. I don't think he's um I don't think he's in any hardship, put it that way. Um, I don't think so. But yeah, someone mentioned the autopsy. That that is going to be, I mean, 
that's going to be a while, I think, before they'll release any any information. Um, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the new members who uh, have joined throughout the stream. Thank you. Someone sent me a super sticker earlier on. Um, so Carly says, um, some YouTube channels are digging into the relationship between Brian and Rose. Don't agree with that. Thanks, Michelle. You're awesome. No. Um, no. I... I don't, I, to be honest, I, I'm not looking into, I'm not looking into Brian's relationships at all at the moment. I'm, I'm more focused on let's, let's find this guy, quite frankly. Um, no, he isn't. He isn't. He's got a sister. His sister did a, um, a, a, a short um, piece to to the press a few days ago. It was before the arrest warrant when he first went missing in her courts. He, um, she did, um, she did a short piece, and I thought she was she was like, oh, I wish I could speak to him right now, and it's like, well, you can. He's at home, and that really got the got the suspicion. I was very, very suspicious when she said that because at that time she was supposed to be at home at that time. He, he was supposed to be at home rather. He was supposed to be at home. So why couldn't she speak to him? So I wasn't surprised at all when it came out um, that um, he was missing. I, I don't know whether he's got any other siblings or whether um uh whether it's just um Cassandra and uh and Brian uh, oh you love the walks you love the walks yeah um I love the walks as well I like doing I like filming outside I I like I talk as I walk and I think I'm think kind of thinking and I don't go out with a I go out with a, an idea of what I want to talk about but then I just um I just start walking and and whatever comes out comes out but it, the, the weather here at the moment is absolutely atrocious it hasn't stopped raining for days now so it's um it's not good filming outside at the moment it's and it's apparently going to rain all week so yeah um rosie's gabby's friend and and some people are speculating on whether there's some kind of relationship or has been a relationship between rose and brian and i to be honest i haven't even given it any thought i i don't think it's relevant at this at this point i don't i the only way it could be relevant is if rose was hiding brian and i absolutely don't think that's the case so it to me it doesn't it doesn't feel it doesn't feel relevant um think well oops thank you for the super sticker thank you so much um there was a point about john walsh yeah, weather in Scotland is bleak. I'm about, um, as the crow flies, about 100 miles from Scotland. As the crow flies. There was, a, there was something about John Walsh. I've, I've lost it now. Um, some, uh, anyway, something about John Walsh taking on Summer's case. He is going to be doing something on Summer. I think it's um, tomorrow on... Um, his, uh, what's it called, his show, In Pursuit with John Walsh, I think it's called, and I'm sure it's this week, um, uh, Wednesday this week, tomorrow. I, I don't know. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Zoe. I shall get some treats for Tilly and Cassie. They will love that. They will love that. I'll definitely buy them some treats. Yeah, it's tomorrow, says uh, Candice. Yeah. I don't know. It, yeah, it's not a full show. It's um, 
It's just a segment. So I, uh, but at least John Walsh is aware of the case of Summer's case. So, um, yeah, it, it's uh, there, there's been a trailer about it. I've seen the trailer, but he's doing he's doing a a segment on Summer. But um, at least he's uh, he's aware of Summer. I I uh, I want John Walsh to interview Don Wells. That <laughs> that would make my day. That would make my day if um, if John Walsh interviewed John Wells. Something tells me, though, that um, Don Wells would not agree. Something tells me that Don Wells would not agree to, uh, to an interview with John Walsh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tay. Oops. Um. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> they'll get fat. They left it. They they left to run off. They left to run off all of these treats. <laughs> thank you. That's brilliant. Okay, I think I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a day here. I've been I've been busy all day, so uh, I'm I'm a bit tired now. I'm still recovering from uh, COVID. That's why I've not been doing many streams. Um, I, I did. I did plan to. Uh, oh, thank you, Diamond J. I, my accent warms my heart. My grand's from Scotland. Yeah, we we. I'm in Lancashire, which is in the northwest of England. A lot of people confuse my accent with that of Yorkshire, but if you're from Lancashire, you you get offended when they say you sound like you're from Yorkshire. <laughs> Yorkshire is the next county across over the hills. Um, <laughs> Uh, but we have we have a similar some of our words some of our pronunciation is very similar to Scottish, but it's we're not far from the Scottish border, so that makes sense, doesn't it? Historically speaking, um, it makes sense that we we have a similar accent. Um, but yeah, I was I was just saying that um, War of the Roses, Purple Moon, Purple Moon, War of the Roses. Oh yeah. Don't get me talking about history. I know I know too much. Um, I don't drink alcohol now, but in my young years, when I was young and stupid, I, I, I did used to have a drink. And uh, I remember one night, um, dare I say this, I wasn't that young. I wasn't that young. Um, it was probably about 10, 10 12 years ago now. That's, I've, not, I've not drunk for, for that long, but... Uh, yeah, I was so drunk one night that I, I actually declared war with Yorkshire, declared war with them. So uh, I hope they're not offended. And if there's any people from Yorkshire in the chat, I, um, I, I love you, really. One of my great, great grandfathers was a Yorkshireman. So I have a little bit of Yorkshire in my blood, um, but I'm firmly um, of the red rose, not the white rose. Lisa is one third English, one third Scottish, and one third Irish. Interesting. Well, I'm I'm half half British and half Sicilian. My my biological father was from Sicily, so I'm a bit of a bit of a mongrel, really. Um, a little bit African as well, but that will be from my father's side. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I was just saying, I. I when when I got kind of got this channel going, I did plan to do like regular live streams, but then I got COVID and I was fine at the time, but I've just had, I'm diagnosed now with long COVID. That's what my doctor has diagnosed me with. Um, and I'm getting better. I'm a lot better now. But for a long time, I was struggling. I was struggling reading. I'm not, I'm, I know it sounds strange, but like my brain wouldn't let me take in words. Like I could, I could read a few comments and then the words just started to all like meld into each other. So I thought I, I can't stream because I can't, I can't read the chat. I'd just like fall asleep. <laughs> like my brain just wasn't functioning properly. And I, I'm only now just starting to be able to actually read and concentrate. 
And um, oh, Kevin Gizmo, you've got a Yorkie. I've got a Yorkie. Um, I've got a Yorkshire Terrier. She's very, very old now. She doesn't go out. Um, she just sits on the settee all day. Um, she's called Bella. She's 15. Um, but yeah, I've got I've got two old timers who just potter around the house. And then I've got um, Cassie and Tilly, as you all know. Um, COVID fog, yeah. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> quarter Cherokee and quarter Irish. Real. <laughs> oh, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? When you when you get your DNA, when you get your DNA done. Um, I mean, my son, um, it is called COVID fog, brain fog. It's terrible, absolutely terrible. It's really bad. It was. It's really debilitating, and I'm only now starting to be able to like actually manage to read this chat and and keep going and keep talking and actually concentrate. Um, thank you, Bunny. Thank you. Um, where were we? Where were we? I've forgotten. You see. <laughs> There you go, case in point. You, you get me off on. I'm bad enough. I'm bad enough as it is anyway. Bad enough as it is anyway. Uh, oh wow, Saint Bernard and the Chihuahua. Oh my God, I'm taking a Saint Bernard and the Chihuahua for a walk. Plus a terrier and a pug. Oh wow, that's brill. Standard poodle. Um, Tilly's part standard poodle. She's she's five part standard poodle to three parts Labrador, so she's uh, she's a Labradoodle, but she's more poodle than Labrador. And fun fact, um, I've got Tilly's mother's pedigree, um, and I was able to trace her standard poodle line back to the dog that won Cruff's dog show, actually won best in show. In the 1980s, I don't know what year. I don't know, but but I remember. I remember him. He was called Montravia Tommygun. So look up champion Montravia Tommygun because he's one of Tilly's great 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 granddaddies. So there you go. Ah, um, oh, Springer Spaniel Bassett owned. Oh wow, Springer Spaniel Cross Basset Hound. My my auntie and uncle have um, a Basset Hound Cross Cocker Spaniel. Um, she's a she's a funny 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 dog. She looks like a she's like long like a Basset, but she's like got a Cocker Spaniel face. So she, and she's she's all black. She's called Lucy. Got a boxer. Wow. Um, uh, Cassie's got a friend who's a boxer. Call Rosie. And a chihuahua. A chihuahua. Oh. Um, who else have we got? Oh, everybody's everybody's telling me the dog breeds now. A Bazenji Catacula. Oh wow. Oh wow. Two Basset Hounds. Oh, this is brilliant. I'm sorry if I'm missing if I'm missing your your, your dogs. Um, Olive Yellow Labrador and Maxwell Barker. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, <laughs> Maxwell Barker. That's great. That's fantastic. Oh, uh, I can't I can't keep up. I can't keep up. Two Shih Tzus. Oh. Jack Russell Chihuahua and a Shih Tzu. I'm sorry if I've missed your if I've missed your doggies. If I've missed your doggies. And a big fluffy cat. <laughs> that does count. That does count. Um I've got two cats. They're very, very old. And my I had a I had a Jack Russell who sadly passed away. She was 15. She passed away in June. And she thought she was a cat. She didn't get on very well with other dogs, but she loved cats. And um so yeah. <laughs> uh, Boston Terrier and a Beagle. I can't keep up with all these now. Boston Terrier and a Beagle. Oh, I miss you, Dalmatian. 
Ah, Dalmatian St. Bernard mix. Oh, wow. What a collie. Actually a cat. <laughs> Shih Tzu cross poodle equals. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Shit poo. <laughs> Shit's poo. <laughs> Sounds rude when you say that. <laughs> I think that was the idea, wasn't it? <laughs> Jack Russell. Yay. Jack Russell's are great. Jack Russell's are fantastic. Uh, oh, wow. Chihuahua. Everybody's got a Chihuahua. I feel a bit. I feel a bit. Oh. Oh. We're all like crazy dog people, aren't we? I think that's probably why um, why people like my walks because they like watching the dogs. So Doberman, Roger the Beagle, Great Dane, ah, oh. Yorkie Poo, a Yorkie Poodle, a boy Chihuahua. Uh, my um, my cousin has a, he's a poodle, no, not a poodle, a, a pug crossed by a beagle. I don't know what, what that would be called. Uh, Alfie the English Cocker. And my, my other cousin has um, a cavapoo, which is a cavalier King Charles Spaniel crossed by a, a little poodle. Puggle, that's it. Puggle. Puggle. And a York, a Yorkie, a Puggle. There you go. Everybody knows these breeds. Okay, I'm going to call it a day now um, before we, we go through the entire, like, <laughs> entire list of dog breeds. <laughs> but uh, thank you for joining me. Um, thank you so much for the super chats. Um, welcome to all the new members. And hopefully now I'm feeling better, I'm able to do a few more of these uh, lives. I like chatting and... Uh, and, uh, and, you know, true crime, it's, it needs to be serious. It needs to be serious. But I think just having a chat and, and, and chilling and talking about dogs and stuff, is, it's, uh, it brightens everybody's day. So um, anyway, I'm going to call it. So I'll see you in the comments. And um, let's see what the next update in this... Um, search for Brian Laundry brings us. So I'll see you all soon. Bye, folks. <laughs>